choosing Lenten practices that are totally arbitrary and ineffective. Um, Pay on Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars, the renewal on this is Ascension Presents. Certainly Lent, right, we want to have um, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and, and it's good to have these things. What I'm going to propose is this, is there's, there's a best way for it. And, and at the heart, at the heart of Lent, in which we want to have sort of the heart of our, our approach to Lent, are, are the words that are one of the options that, to hear uh, on Ash Wednesday. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the good news. At the heart of what we're discerning to do for Lent is where are areas of repentance for us? And can we have Lenten practices at the service of this? And now on to one of my other sort of <laughs> general struggles with popular approach to things is I think we generally have um, a disordered approach to repentance. And by disordered, I literally mean out of order, right? And again, these beautiful words of, of Jesus that we, we um, have an option to hear on, on Ash Wednesdays, but we can sort of just take or this, like repent and believe in the good news. And often we try repentance without the good news. And kind of how I view this is this, pretend you have a, like a, a pretty bad limp, and the reason you have it is because you have a bad hip. Often, our approach to repentance is this, is all right, I'm going to stop limping. I'm going to do it. This, this Lent, after this confession, after this whatever, like, I'm just going to stop limping. And try and do that if you have, like, a really bad hip. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you can sort of toughen it out a little bit. But in the long run, like, it's not going to be effective. Like, if you want to stop limping, you need to go and get your hip fixed. And you go and you do whatever you need to do for, for, your, for your hip, for the deeper sort of issue. And as a result the limp will go away. Um, and so sometimes we try, we try and just get at the sort of the symptom or the behavior without getting to the deeper sort of wound and sickness. You know, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, right? It kind of, it kind of identifies this, this wound that we have, right? After the fall, all subsequent sin is a result of disobedience and a lack of trust in the goodness of God. There's a component at the source of all of our sin and all of the wound here of just a lack of trust in the goodness of God, or I, I kind of like fill it out with like also like a lack of remembrance of the goodness of God. And so if we want to leave some of these bad behaviors behind, um, which is a great thing to focus on in Lent, um, we want to sort of somehow have a way in which we're getting in contact with the goodness of God, right? We, we Another word that sort of the Greek word for this repentance or conversion is like metanoia, the change of mind. Where are we? Where have we forgotten or where are we, where are we doubting the goodness of God? And how can that be the medicine, the remedy, the healing of the core issue, which will, as a result, um, make sort of the symptoms go away? Some examples of it might be this. Maybe you really struggle with impatience, right? And so all the time you're, you're just you're just getting so impatient with people and kind of angry and frustrated and you're walking around like this and that. On the natural level, on one level, which is a helpful level, like that's going to, it's going to be good to practice patience in something, right? And, and so maybe that is just like um, a little bit more discipline with like how often you check your phone or, or what you watch and it's sort of maybe a little bit more quiet time, all this sort of stuff, right? Like if you're struggling with patience, a good Lenten sort of practice fasting is going to be um, something that makes you practice patience. But also we want to get down to the to the core here, and and there's a natural and supernatural part of it. Is again like why, like why are you so frustrated? Why do you feel the pressure? Why are you sort of angsty? Where does this like on the natural level? Like what? Is, why do you have this rawness that makes you impatient with people? I'm, I'm overstretched and I'm, I'm like, I just don't feel like I have necessarily the resources to accomplish what I got to do. And so I kind of have this fight or flight thing. And so when people still ask for more of my time, I don't have time to give them. So I'm defensive. Why are you doing so much? Is there like, is this, is this driven by God? Is this driven by something else? But then even this, like we want, like spiritually, and this is like prayer, fasting, almsgiving, part of the prayer and part of the, the deep sort of spiritual source to be patient with other people is remembering God's patience with us. If we're struggling with patience, we'd want our Lent to have a real concrete, particular prayer, remembering how God has been faithful with, with us um, constantly, faithful with all of salvation history, 
So this could be some sort of prayer, you know, of like, look how patient he's always been with the people of God. And then look at your own particular salvation history um, and the ways he continues to be so patient with you. Just kind of looking at your ongoing struggles, the things you keep bringing back to the Lord again and again and again. This will t- tap us into the deepest source of the goodness of God, how he has been so patient with us. Help us to remember that. And hopefully that, right, can flow into a greater patience. Another example would be like, maybe you're struggling with envy, okay? And, and so like... So a good Lenten practice would certainly be like, where, where are some of the things that we're doing that trigger the envy? For me, maybe it's, you know, looking at social media and you see sort of this thing happening in this person's life or that person, or maybe it's something you see on TV or the magazines. And so, so stepping away from that, like you don't want to keep feeding it. But then like, how can we go deeper? Looking at like all that God has given us. He's given us himself. He's, he's given us the hope of eternal life. He's come to save us. He's given us the truth. He has called us. He has chosen us. He, he, by our baptism, we have become sons and daughters, and he says to us, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter. He's given us a particular gifts and, 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 and fruitfulness and, and a hope that is just for us. Like, we have so much to be grateful for. And so if we're struggling with envy, like, if you will, and, that's, and we want to stop doing that, that's like the limp, we want to get to the sort of the deeper issue, sort of the, the, the wounded hip, by going to like, just remembering how much we have to be grateful for, remembering the goodness of God, right? And this will bear long time fruit. And so again, like if I'm struggling with envy, I'm gonna step away from the things that trigger the envy. And also I'm gonna remember like how good God is and why I have so much reason to be grateful. And we'll kind of journey through this in a Lenten series, but like mercy, right? Maybe you're just really struggling with forgiveness. And so part of it is just to, to sort of maybe a Lenten practice is just this ongoing discipline of like not, not brooding over sort of the wound, not kind of looking at the person and thinking about all this sort of how angry you are. A real component of this is is, act, is finding healing, you know, and taking whatever the woundedness is to the Lord. And, and that sort of ability to offer mercy in one level is going to be the fruit of, of, of healing. And so you continue the, the, the healing process. And this is a good place of prayer, of bringing it to the Lord and allowing him to love you there. And then also is this, like we can give mercy because we have received mercy, right? And just this reminder, maybe praying before a crucifix, uh, the reminder of of how merciful and ongoingly merciful the Lord is to us. And so a healing of the wound, bringing the hurt to the Lord, praying with how merciful he has been to us, not sort of feeding sort of the anger, etc. All of this like can really be well integrated with sort of the Lenten practices of prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Okay, we're going to fast from these things which sort of trigger the bad behavior. Um, We're going to prayerfully sort of bring whatever the wounds are to the Lord. We're going to prayerfully see how the Lord has given, has has loved us in these areas first, how he has been patient with us, how he has been merciful merciful with us, how he has sort of loved us, received us as we are, etc. And then Sort of the almsgiving is its own thing, which you can discern appropriate to your own means. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. And, and this, we're going to have a little series going through the Good Samaritan and, and looking at the wounds and looking at the healing and looking at the goodness of God. So I'm really looking forward to it. I feel like it's kind of an anointed thing. Hopefully we can prayerfully pick some Lenten practices that are not arbitrary and ineffective, but actually helpful, leading to ongoing conversion and deeper sort of freedom in Christ. All right, thanks so much for watching. Remember, we are pilgrim from the surf. Somos peregrinos, poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. Come on, see you.